So has anyone here taken the GREs or the MCAT yet? Mm -hmm. So I think, so what year is everybody? Um, Second. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so you have some time, which is great. Can you do it post Yeah. Okay. Well, when did you graduate? Ooh, that's giving away my age, but okay. <laughs> um, 2000 and my, my bachelor's was in 2005. Oh, that's fine. And then my bachelor's was like in 2010. Okay. As long as, like, I think is for me at least, I think your experience is really great because you really know what you want. Um, however, I think with you girls also starting now and thinking about your future is also really important because there's a lot of requirements that come along with applying to a PhD program. Mm -hmm. Usually you have to take the juries. However, if you're going to do the MD PhD portion, you can just take the MCATs and apply that way. Um, and then you can choose your med school, and they will pay for you to go to med school, which is really cool. So that's something I actually never even heard about or knew about, that you could really go to medical school for free and get paid to go. Right. So these programs are in place to allow it to happen. So you should never let that stop you from following what you want to um, So we can talk a bit about the program. So how does it work? So you are at the National Institute of Health, which is at the Best of Maryland, which is about 20 minutes outside Washington, D.C. Um, and then you're at the University of Oxford or the University of Cambridge in England, which is really cool. <laughs> so another nice thing about the program is every year we do a really big workshop, which my group funds. So this year coming up, we'll be at the University of Oxford and all the students get together, they share their work, they present, um, you have like a really fancy dinner where everyone dresses up and gets to know each other. So it's like a really cool, unique experience that you don't get anywhere else. So coming from also with me, I have a bachelor's in bio. I was pre-med. Um, I worked in a lab for four years. Um, it's very hard because like when you want to go into the PhD, the majority of the PhD programs are about seven to nine years is a very long time. So what's really nice about this program is it's a maximum of four years. So you really, you get to it, you don't have to take classes, which is also a really nice feature. And you get to choose your project. So say you're really interested in something, like you're interested in engineering, computer science, you can choose a project between two labs and work together as a team, but you are pretty much your own boss. So it's a cool way that you're managing yourself, but also like learning how to be a really good scientist. It's pretty cool. So there's two other, well really three other, um, scholarships that you can apply to. So there's Gates, Marshall, and Rhodes. So what that will allow you to do is have like full funding the entire time, and it's very prestigious. So if you get one of these scholarships, you're pretty much set before applying to any of these programs. So that's something that you would do beforehand. Um, okay, our students. So right now we have 69 students with 28 empty PhDs. So there's different track levels, which I'll go into in a little bit. Um, and so we have like roughly 100 students, which is a nice group. So it's not too small where you feel like, you know, everybody is too much, but it's not too big where you feel like you're going to get lost in the mix. Um, we have about 160 applications come in. We get about 40 interviews, um, 20 offers, and about 15 accept. We are trying to broaden that now. Um, but don't let those numbers scare you at all. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's a, if you have that background and you know, and you feel like you're a strong candidate for this, just try, apply. What I've always heard from people too is like, even if you don't think you fit exactly the mold that you Think that they want, apply anyway, give it a shot. Um, what's also really nice about the program is it's a free application. So a lot of the applications, even to Oxford and Cambridge, it's like 50 pounds to apply, which is like 75 bucks. So this is a, also a really nice way to, you can just try it out and see um, with not having that like financial burden. Because applications get really expensive. Mm -hmm. So usually between August and December, you apply to the program. 
February, you're invited to interview, and then you would start in August. And at that start, you would also come to the workshop, which is usually in July, um, at either Oxford, Cambridge, or the NIH. And then you get to meet all the current students, get to know the people in the program before actually starting. And the PhD is about four to like four and a half years. You defend in September and you graduate. Okay. So there's different tracks of med school. So what some people do is they go to med school for two years, and then they do their research for about four years, and then they go back to school for another two. Um, that's usually what the majority of people do. However, you can also do it in different ways. You can go to med school for three years, do your PhD in four, and go back for the final year. Um, or you can do four and four. So you can break it up that way. Um, it's pretty much, you. so you would apply to med school, you apply to the program, and then they would meet in the middle to figure out what exactly you feel is best at that time. <laughs> So we have a really awesome group of alumni, which not a lot of programs actually keep track of where the alumni have won. I am currently working on a database, and I have been in touch with every single alumni that has graduated from the program since 2005. And they've gone on to do practice medicine, have their own practices. They started their own labs in academia. Um, some have gone on to start their own companies, so industry-related. Six, we have six CEO founders. Just a couple weeks ago, Forbes released its third gender 30. One of our guys, Stan Wang, he was listed for his new company, Salino Biotech. Um, so that's really cool to see. And just having those contacts is also something I feel is like very valuable. At the end of the day, it's all about who you know and who you meet. And you want people to believe in you and believe in your research. I think it's great that we have this accessibility that you said Oh, I heard so-and-so graduated the program. Could you put me in contact with them? And I would say, sure. Like, I'll give you their email. I'll set you up to chat, meet in person. Um, that's something that a lot of places, they just don't really have the time to keep track of everyone that goes through. So a lot of the bigger schools, you just kind of go in and go. Um, so it's cool that we have that unique relationship with our alumni. And I'm also working on getting them to attend the workshop so that way our current students can actually get to know the people who've gotten into the program. <coughs> so how do you apply? So obviously no one's going to apply right now, but that's okay. Um, it's actually better, I think, for you to understand how it works um, before just being like, I'm just going to do it right now. <laughs> so the application portal is usually closed at the beginning of December. So you apply with your CV, um, which actually if you ever need help, and then you can reach out to us and we can help you with your CV and how to make it look really good. Um, you have to play with the juries or the MCATs. So the juries is just the typical how you apply to grad school, you take that test. Now, if you took the MCAT and you were thinking about med school, you can also apply through using the MCAT. Um, you get usually about two to three letters of recommendation, so if you do any research now, you can have your heart mentor write your letter of recommendation, someone that you took a class with, um, usually like a teacher you don't want like your sister or your mom to write you over there, but definitely someone that can show that your strength in science is there. So how would you, how would you look to potential mentors at NIH mm -hmm. and mentors in the UK? Uh, would you just start calling people up? And yeah, so we would them. help with that. Um, pretty much, you know, that's decided about after we get into the program. Nice. But you should have an idea about who you're interested in. If you said, I'm interested in HIV, then you would look up to see what people were doing research on HIV and kind of go from there. Um, but we would actually also help you to meet them during that time before you actually start. So you usually hear back around March and April, and that's when you decide which PhD program is best for you. And we would then do a call back. So we'd invite you back to the NIH to meet people, to get to know the labs, and do it that way. So other PhD programs, you have to do a rotation. So usually it's a year or two of classes. And then you do three to four rotations with different mentors. We eliminate that to graduate you in four years. Um, so you kind of have to have an idea of what research you're interested in. And then you would choose your mentors. But everyone's there to help you. And I personally think it's great, especially when you know exactly what you want to do. Um, 
because you don't want to take those classes. Who wants to be in classes for enough two years? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Um, some more information, so you can visit our website about the <coughs> OxCam or the NIH MD PhD portion. On this, mm -hmm. what's a CV? CV is your resume. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know the first time I heard this. You know, CV. Like, I know it's like curriculum vitae. Okay. <laughs> so fancy way of saying resume. <laughs> um, yeah. So usually in your resume, what you do is you talk about your school. Um, if you did any research, what type of research you're interested in, um, if you worked in a lab before, what kind of work were you doing, um, yeah, any kind of extracurricular activities, that kind of stuff goes into your CV. Okay, so just gonna go through a few people. So Alan Shear, he is a scientific director, so he's pretty much like head of the program. Um, Elaine Alshanger, so she is the director of admissions for all of the NIH. So pretty much all of the applications that come in through the program will go through her. Craig Blackstone. He is the director of the MD PhD portion of the program. So he would be that person that you would go to to talk about doing the MD and the PhD together. That everyone is super nice also, which is great. Um, and Katie. So Katie is the managing director of Oxcam. She is wonderful. She just started in September and has already done such great work. Um, before they would honestly never really go out and recruit, but she's been very much on top of getting new students, getting really great scientists into the program. And it's actually nice too that you have someone who is in charge of everything who is really there for you. So she really cares about the students and every month pretty much we plan an event with the students to get them together to get to know each other. Um, so they go to baseball games and hockey games and we've gone to a museum before and they all, they're doing gingerbread house making because <laughs> there's a contest. So we try to organize also fun things because we understand it's also really difficult doing a PhD and it's stressful. So we want everyone to have a really good experience. So that's something Katie and I are working on together. So these are just executive committees. Um, so they all meet to discuss this process. This honestly don't really need to worry about that right now. Okay, so future things for next year. Um, you can mark your calendar. So they'll have different career fairs and I hope to actually come back next year, maybe earlier on so that way when you're ready to apply, we can pretty much work on it together. Um, honestly, it, it is confusing. I didn't have family that were scientists, so I didn't really know how it worked. So it's nice when you're able to like talk to someone about the process and you know, figure it out, because it's confusing. And I know your teachers can help you as well, but if you ever need help, that's why we're here. So here's just some examples. So Trey had two different labs, one in the US and one in the UK. Um, one did molecular mechanisms of fibrosis and repairing disease, while the other one worked on stem cells. So his project combined both of those labs for his PhD thesis, which is pretty cool. And that is it. Thank you. Questions? <laughs> you need to your yeah, of course. I don't have any business cards on me, and I apologize, so I will Oh, maybe I can put it up here. Yeah.
you see that again? How long have you been there, Alex? I had recently started. So I started at the end of June. Yeah, so it's new for me too. It's kind of nice. Do you know these are so small? It yeah, it's so small. I'm sorry. Let's do like seventy. Where's the phone? Home. I'm sorry. This is like the home the button right. All the way to the top to the left. They changed it. This is the file. Home. Home here. Home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's bigger. Yeah, yeah. But I got this. Like that? That's good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It still looks pretty small. So that's J. A J. <clears throat> Believe me, everyone says when they email me, I'm like, it's Alex. But my I put my mail address in because my old email address when I went to Cold Spring Harbor was AA at TSHL.edu. And they would always autocorrect to only one A. Mm -hmm. So I figured if I put J in there it would be a little bit easier, but then everyone just calls me Kaja. <laughs> That's a nice name, though. That's a that's a powerful name. I do. Yeah. I like it. So I don't mind when someone says it to me. But yeah, I'm Alex. So any questions that you have? Well, um, what's your position in this program? So okay, so because we work with the government, any funds that go through need to be through an outside source. Mm -hmm. So I work for a nonprofit that supports the PhD program. So I pretty much cover all the costs. So like the workshop I was telling you about, we fund that. Um, all the fun things that happen, we fund that. Uh, for recruitment, there's dinners and stuff, so we help out with that. So really cool for this year, we're going downtown DC. I booked a restaurant, we have a whole place. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, so pretty much anything that the, the government can't fund, that's where we step in. If we um, for the so for this this cycle is a little late. Yeah. I don't know for others, but for myself. Mm -hmm. So once I finish taking um, the exam that's required for the application, mm -hmm. is there a certain timeline that I need to in order to apply? Or can yeah. I so I usually say start thinking in August. Okay. I would try to get everything done prior to August if you can. Mm -hmm. um, so if you say you're graduating in you want to take a little time off before like finishing the classes, graduating, and then applying to the program. I'd say take the MCATs and juries in June. So if you want to take it again in July or August, you are able to. And then I'd say by October, you should kind of have all of your stuff together. Applications, usually the deadlines are beginning of December. Once in a while, you get a few that are like November 30th. Um, so that's really what you just have to keep in mind the deadlines. So can you apply before that or you have to wait until that time? No, no, no. Usually the application portals open a month or two in advance. Okay. Um, so I believe... Is that right here? Beginning of October. Okay. Yeah. That's usually when the portals open, but pretty much if you have all your stuff ready to go, the applications go pretty quickly. Just filling out your name, address, and Letters of recommendation, I would say August, September, start asking because people take forever. I know from experience, um, better to have them ahead of time. You you can't submit your letters of recommendation, they will need to, so you just want to keep on top of people and say, hey, you know, I just want to make sure that you sent it. Make sure you get them from people that will talk highly about you as well. You just want to make sure that that's not what that you got to do. So if you do research, I recommend trying to do some research while you're here. I know there's a research program, all right? So we, we have a rights program. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can do some research, uh, that's a great way for you to get to know somebody who can write a really good recommendation letter. Any other questions? Um, you said you um, majored in biology. After you graduated, you joined the program. So I worked as a lab technician first, um, which I think is helpful. Um, it's not required by any means. I have a few friends that did a similar path to me where they worked for a little bit and then went on to grad school. Um, it's 
it's pretty much up to you if you feel that your research during undergrad was not strong enough or you just were unsure of what field you want to go into, what your interests were. I would recommend working for one to two years. I say that because it's really easy to just stay on. Um, so just kind of think about now what kind of research you're interested in, whether it be infectious disease, or neuroscience, or cancer, like I was a cancer biologist. Um, so my focus was on prostate cancer, but metastatic prostate cancer, so actually lung cancer was my main focus, but lung cancer that occurred after the prostate cancer was already there. Um, so just kind of figure out what you're interested in now is a great time to start, especially because we're going to apply either next year or the year after. So just seeing who is there, who would you want to work for at either the MAH or Oxford or Cambridge? What kind of science interests you? What makes you excited? Um, because you really, it's, you have to be dedicated to it. And you don't want to be in something that you're not interested in. You want to love what you do. We were actually talking before about the best kind of jobs are the ones that you, you wake up every day and you're excited to go to work. So that's definitely, hello. So you separate it. So what you can do is you can go to med school for two years. So you do like your classes and then you do the PhD. And then you do like your rotations in the hospital. So your school part is pretty much done before you start the PhD. Or you can do PhD in med school. So you're not doing the both. Is there any way? Would not have You wouldn't sleep. <laughs> you would need to be a robot. Because, <laughs> like, I would say an average day in the lab is, it could be flexible depending on your what you're working on, but there's sometimes that your experiments run overnight. Um, depends what you're working on. So, going to grad school and doing the PGA at the exact same time, it's impossible. <laughs> I think you would also be really unhappy. <laughs> and have no way. So that may sound okay now, but when you're doing it, it's too much. So, so speak to so a bit of the PhD process. So the, the traditional PhD process, you come in, you have comprehensive exams, yeah. you know, oral exams, and then finally you write your thesis. Mm -hmm. uh, how, does this, how does this work in the two years? Do you just really just go into the lab and start? You go working? right into the lab to start. And, yeah. and you really just focus on the thesis? You just do research, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I really like because I hate tests, yeah. so. so you don't have to write like a... You have to write your thesis, but you don't have to have like a written exam. So like friends of mine that are doing their PhDs in traditional PhD programs, they have classes for two years. You're not getting to the bench two years. Yeah. So this is a unique experience because you are going in right to the bench. So, so in terms of students who come in, mm -hmm. What's sort of like the breakdown? I'm thinking, are there master's students who, or are um, there more, you know, undergraduate students who are coming? It's a mix. I have to say, it really is. Mm -hmm. um, we've had people that have done masters. We've had people that have worked as a lab tech. Um, we have also had freshmen of undergrad. A lot of postbacs. I've noticed. So people who come for postbac programs. Yeah. So. I never heard about a postbac oh, until yeah. like yeah. yeah. So. I'm sorry, I was a little late, but Don't I'm worry. curious to know the deadline for to, um, to apply. Um, so it's December 3rd. It's 3rd, okay. Yeah. Okay. Did you take the GREs? Um, I didn't. Okay. So that's um, my follow-up question. Do you guys require GREs? Yeah. You guys do? Okay. You, I would say if there is a way to apply without using it, you may be able to. Okay. Most, why? The thing is, most schools are facing the GRE. I know. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, I know of all the schools that don't okay. require your GRE. So actually, if you apply to Oxford and Cambridge directly, mm -hmm. you don't need the GREs. Oh, yeah. okay, I see. But we can talk after this. Okay, so we'll do. I'll tell you everything. Um, so yeah, any other questions? Or? Do you need a master's to go to a... PhD or uh, medical school? Yes. Oh, okay. Which is really nice. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll be in school for a bit. So, for example, like usually in the UK, they do a master's because that's where your classes are. Mm -hmm. So, in the US PhD, your classes are part of the PhD. 
here, you don't have to do either. So you don't have those extra classes. You're just running the lab, which is really nice. Um, yeah. How will have some effect if this is related to business or something? <laughs> yeah, but in that case, it's not. So. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. I mean, you could go into business. <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of. Um, so one of the alumni that I am in touch with, he works at McKinsey right now, doing like healthcare consulting. Mm -hmm. There's a break between the PhD and the MD, so that's kind of a cool experience. You can do a lot with a PhD. Um, that's something that I felt like I didn't, wasn't really told when I was in college was that there's so many different outlets that you can go into. So you can even be somebody like me where you did the lab work and then now you're working for the program. So you just got to figure out what you like. So right. I personally like talking to people. Um, I love the bench work, but I think I am better. <laughs> at like dealing with people and talking to people about science because that's what I love to do. Uh, so there's so many different things that you can go into. Like, <coughs> so I think my biggest recommendation is just take one, take one coding class. Yeah. <laughs> just do it for me. Because I wish I did. Because there's so much that you can do and they pay you so much. Which I know we shouldn't be driven by financial stuff, but like I have a friend, for example, and she got a job like that. Literally, she applied. They called me the next day for a letter of recommendation. And the day after they called me, they hired her because wow. they didn't have anybody to do the job. Wow. Yeah. And she's like, she calls me and goes, do you think this is normal? <laughs> she's like, Are, do you think they're really going to hire me? And I was like, honestly, I've never seen this process go so quickly. Yeah. But they don't have scientists that can coach. I would think professions like coding, I don't know. Yeah, that's really good. You honestly, I would. Did you have a master's? I have um, a master's in computer science. In uh, I was a master's certification. My mm -hmm. job made me get it. Okay. In iOS development, I wanted mm -hmm. Java development. I wanted web development, but I wanted it like put it in the science. Yeah. Like okay. So you can do a. <sighs> Bio, what's it? Let me pick up the name. Um, Bioinformatics degree. Oh, I purchased that. You should purchase that. That's what my friend has. Oh, okay. Can you just program? No. Oh, right. She did it during my year. Yeah, that's what I did the others. Yeah. You should look As not representing the program, <laughs> as <laughs> a friend. Because I'm looking at the national requirement. It's yeah. not just going to apply. So she, okay, for example, my friend, yeah. minimum salary is really strange, so like 70 to 80 times a year. Mm -hmm. Which is good. Okay. Her new job is at like 150. You can make a lot. I know. I'm saying that's like no, minimum. That chatting, sorry. It's like, <laughs> no, I don't know if you want to do that. Mm -hmm. But so she is like helping build like a biobank. So she analyzes all human samples that go up in Boston at Dana Farber. Did she major in programming or she just took a class? No, so she did a master's in biophonics. Something to think about as well if you're thinking like. How about programming? She's the one who did program a long time. Bioinformatics degree. After graduating, I joined this program and I had to do two years. Do they still pay for my medical school or do I have to do all four years and then? No, they pay for the medical school portion. So when you're in the doctoral part, the PhD part, they pay for you in England and stuff for your living expenses and everything? Then they give you like a job. I do buy the Yeah, I think that's a good one. Yeah, so it's not like a lot. Or something, to be honest, but it's like <laughs> cost of living. Yeah, like you can afford to live on <laughs> You're not like going shopping on the fence, but it's kind of boring. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You're shopping at Prep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I thought that ended already. No, that's the end of the I heard you so much. I thought, of course. But I. 
encourage you, I would think, just look at the biochromatics. Because I'm, I'm just thinking just time-wise, which is maybe a good idea. And I know from friends that it's very easy to get a job. Like, do you, what, what is your end goal? Okay. But have to say like designing then I think this is a good idea yeah and this would be cool then because you would do both degrees in a shorter amount of time they have the I believe so. I would look into it. Um, I can just go on the website and go to the website and you can go through all the clubs. There's a lot of clubs. Um, I do you know from a friend, Cornell just developed a new AI building here in the city. AI. All, like, all artificial yeah, it's really it's really good. I don't know. It's, I don't know if it's opened yet. Is it going to be open to the public or just for the public? For the research. Oh, the research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I shouldn't be saying this. <laughs> yeah, Two more questions because there was a class there and I want to wrap it up so you can wear it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, Shelly, we would like to talk to you. Yes, yeah, we can talk. Mm -hmm. um, Let me give you. You can grab some food as much as you can. Thank you. So if you have a few more of these. 